Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. It has been a while since my last video and to be honest, I think I kind of burned out a bit. Um, I haven't had much motivation to record, I haven't been playing many games. I did pick up um, Battlefleet Gothic, the new Warhammer game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I binge played my way through Plague Inc. <laughs> that I streamed last week and uh, I really haven't been doing all that much. Uh, just haven't been feeling up to it. But in the last couple of days, uh, there was a nice new patch for From the Depths that brought along these beautiful things. Now these are the particle cannons. I'm sure you see, have seen them now if you've played the game. Um, recently anyway, they've just been pushed to the stable branch and they're there for everyone to play with. Now initially when I started playing with these, I was honestly pretty disappointed. I thought they were, you know, clunky, difficult to build with, impractical, and, you know, really quite lacklustre. But then I started playing with them a little bit more. And now that I actually understand how they work, I think they're pretty damn good, actually. Uh, I would even go so far as to say they're even a bit powerful. Um, they are a hit-scan weapon, much like a laser, but they seem to be much, much power more powerful than a laser in a smaller footprint. They don't require as much power, and they can do a whole bunch of different things. Um, we look in the Q menu here for the part, we have so many different sliders, and this is basically how they're all configured. The, the actual cannon systems, they're only made up of two uh, functional parts. We look in the build menu, the lasers, the particle cannon is your enormous 3x3x3 sort of firing piece, and the particle tubes and the tube corners and the tube terminators are basically your additional damage. So. You add as many particle tubes and bits as you need and you stick them onto the particle cannon and that's basically it. You have five inputs but they're not, um, you can see it better on this guy, they're not symmetrical and that makes these guys an absolute pain in the ass to build and they're also the tubes are one way so yeah they're a real real nightmare. Uh, this guy here is what I like to think of as the squirrel destroyer. I, I I have never seen a weapon that is capable of killing squirrels or any fast aircraft so ludicrously consistently in such a small amount of time. Let us demonstrate. This thing is amazing. I think I haven't turned on yet. Um, this is an EMP particle cannon. Uh, you can see here there's actually four options. You have piercing, explosive shock, EMP and impact and that's like thumper damage, like uh, you know thumper warheads. EMP is quite possibly the new godly anti-air defense. It is just savage. So let's get a squirrel and wait for it. He has to come within 900 meters. Oh, there he goes. And we have a dead squirrel. Very nice, right? Pretty effective. I like to think of this guy as like a, a gunslinger, like a, from a Western. He spots his target and hip shoots. Death to the thingy. Let's get something faster. Um, now it doesn't work against things that are really large, but uh, the spike I think can take one or two hits. Pew! The lot knocked out something important. And it'll probably get nabbed again on the way past. On a two axis turret you'll see, it's a ball turret. And there we go, AI dead. And that was one of the larger ships, that's like an 800 um, mass ship. And it has I think a couple of uh, surge protectors in it too. Uh, let's find something really nasty, like a hake. Uh, Hakes are like really fast, they fly at over 100 meters per second, but that doesn't matter because we've got a hit scan death and destroyer of worlds. Well, destroyer of small planes anyway. Super, super effective, really small, and if we look in the power, uh, all your stats are down here. So whenever you're tweaking these different values, these stats change dependent on them. You see we have two arms in use here, arm one and arm three, which are the ones I built off on the sides. And they use 8,000 per shot and 8,000 per shot. So that's about 16,000, well 16,200 per shot every 10 seconds. So this thing is super, super effective, but because it's only every 10 seconds, you only need about 1600 power to keep it going, which is just over half a red line, which is really quite effective. Uh, another thing you have to note about these things is they get all of their power from batteries. You have to, have to, have to, have to use batteries. There's no way around it. Um, that's uh, you have to be charging it with uh, fuel engines. Uh, the old engines still don't work, thankfully. 
Uh, I wonder when they're actually going to get removed. Because this platform still uses them. Really could do with an update. Ah, I'm lost. Oh, there they are. Hard to miss with the big red outline. But yeah, they, um, they do need batteries. And this massive battery bank is for those two stupid cannons on the right there. And I'll demonstrate them in a little minute. But this seems to be an absolutely amazing go-to for anti-air defense. Very, very dedicated. It's really useless against just about everything else. But in terms of anti-air for small ships, it is just savage. Okay, let's have a look at this big guy in the middle. Uh, I think this is something you're probably going to find in you know more practical implementation on ships and stuff like that. And this is built into like a, a 3x3 collar like you would with a normal... You know, like a normal cannon, one of the in-hull designs, and it's on a, a two-axis turret, or a one-axis turret, sorry, and just can rotate horizontally. And uh, it's got, it's set up in the Q menu with its horizontal focus set to high. Now let's talk about these sliders here quickly. They're all pretty well described in what they do. Uh, you can mouse over them and get a tooltip. And the, the way they all interrelate is quite interesting. Now, horizontal and vertical focus is kind of like your barrel configuration for a cram cannon. And it's just a way to set your horizontal, your azimuth, or your vertical pitch to um, allow your um, particle cannon to actually shoot in that direction. So you can see actually down here in the statistics, if you see the horizontal focus power and the vertical focus power, this is uh, something like your, um, the, your azimuth and pitch allowances for how far they can aim, which is... Uh, kind of handy, so you, you don't actually have to have these static, they can have quite a large arc of fire, which is really interesting. Uh, next we have damage and attenuation. Uh, this is again all explained, but the damage, uh, you can set this higher and it will do more damage at short range and uh, the damage will drop off faster the, the further away from the initial shot. So you don't want to set this too high because basically if you have this set to maximum, from what I understand the attenuation is one per kilometer, which is a significant loss every kilometer. I'm not 100% sure if this is like actually 100% loss in one kilometer, because this range field seems to dictate something else. Oh, that's vertical focus bar. You see whenever you change that, the range goes up significantly? So there must be some sort of uh, trade-off there. It might take that long for it to actually dissipate completely, and uh, yeah. Still haven't worked that out entirely yet. But uh, the attenuation is basically how how quickly you lose damage. And uh, damage is obviously damage. You can see the numbers changing here. Um, so if you want a sniper ship, you really want to have this set pretty low. Because even at the minimum setting, we're losing... Well, actually, we're losing very little. But we do very little damage. We set this to somewhere about here. 0 0.38 per kilometer. That's, that's still a big loss. But... It's enough to last until like seven kilometers according to this, so that's cool. Um, I like to set this somewhere in the middle uh, without pushing too far up. Depends what you want really. I mean, if you want a ship that can shoot two kilometers, then you're gonna have to set this a little bit lower and sacrifice some damage to get that range. Um, the field of fire is fairly obvious. It's the field of fire and it's, uh, uh, it's the field of fire in degrees. So it's pretty simple, very, very self-explanatory. But one thing to note is the, um, the gun has higher accuracy closer to the center of fire. So if you're shooting at something that's highly elevated in comparison to your firing piece, then it will be less accurate and it will um, the particles will stream out and not hit more often if it's too, too far deviated from your, the very center. So it's worth keeping this pretty low. I find these work really well on two axis turrets. Um, and that means that you can set this field of fire really low and they pretty much never sacrifice too much of their accuracy. Very cool. Um, for this, because we have it on a one-axis turret, I have to set it sort of moderately high. I want about a 20 degree elevation, so it's able to shoot at sort of higher up targets and stuff like that. Now, onto efficiency and overclock. This is basically like the one on the railguns. The, the higher your overclock is set, the more damage you're gonna do. But it's an exponential scaling on your power. So um, if we look at the power per shot here, this is 8,000 on arms hero. Uh, we can ramp this up two times and it's now 32,000 which is a little bit more than twice we go up to three times it's 78,000 which is even more than twice the last value so you know it's uh, it it ramps up very quickly you're better off building a bigger turret if you want it to be more energy efficient 
but this is a way to make smaller turrets, give them a lot more poke without having to actually build an enormous turret if you have room in the back line for loads of engines. It's, it's a nice option for trade-off. Uh, next we have damage and inaccuracy. This is again pretty self-explanatory. You can trade off damage for accuracy. At longer ranges you're going to need better accuracy, otherwise your, sh your shots just flat out won't hit anything. So you might as well take the accuracy because a shell that misses completely or a shot that misses completely does zero damage whereas at least an accurate low power shot does it consistently. So it's again a nice little trade off and uh, pretty simple. Charge time is how long it takes to fire. This is your refire rate and it's very very set in stone for these cannons which is kind of interesting. Um, one thing to note and more, most importantly to note is higher firing Higher firing speeds are much less focused and therefore less accurate. So while you can set this to 0.1 seconds and go absolutely mad and shoot crazy streaming bol bolts into the sky, these will never ever 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 hit anything. They're, they're completely worthless. Um, unless you've got maybe a ship that goes up really close to the target. You see, there are loads of options for this. How about a submarine that goes underneath its target and does something like this? I mean, there's so many cool options. But generally speaking, for most practical uses, having your charge time set to point 0.1 is pointless. But very, very cool. Um, I normally set this straight up to 10 because there's it's like a linear scale. If we set this, right, we've got 8,000 damage. If we set this to 1, we do 800 damage, which is 1 tenth of 10. It's a completely linear scale and you benefit from accuracy as well. So as you go further down the scale, you don't lose any damage, but you do lose accuracy. So they're most efficient at a charge time of 10. They'll get their best range and their best accuracy. There are, of course, times that you'll want to use a lower charge time, but in most cases, you actually probably want to have them all the way to 10. So let's demonstrate this guy. He's a more, much more practical. Um, it still uses an awful lot of energy, but it's a, it's a much larger turret and the overclock is only set to 1, so um, in terms of efficiency and damage, it's much more efficient than that other small turret. This one is set for piercing damage, so let's get something... Hmm, white flares... let's get a basher, I like shooting bashers recently. And I'll just turn the AI off. Oh, there it goes already. Um, this is a pretty meaty piercing shot, and it will just make a hole pretty much straight through nearly anything. Whenever we get, oh, oh, not the right button. Let's get, let the explosion dissipate. There we go. Now, that's pretty effective. It did blow all, all the way through this side as well, which is pretty cool. All that lovely block confetti floating away there. Now, the long refire time does sort of hamper their DPS. It looks, it looks like they don't do a lot of damage, but this is a pretty effective sniper kit. I mean, it... It basically cored the area around that AI. There's another shot doing exactly the same thing. And uh, yeah, the, the piercing element of these shells is really cool. Very, very powerful. And the fact that it completely ignores shields, well... There you go, people have been complaining shields are overpowered. Not anymore. Particle cannons just ignore them completely. So let's try some of the other stuff. The explosive shock, because it sets your damage potential to 10% of the total, it's not really that useful. It can be pretty funny on extremely high damage things because it, it sort of vaporizes things in a neat little five meter area. Oh, we've already killed that basher. We snipe the AI out from in, in the middle, which is pretty cool. Let's get another one. The explosive one is, it's pretty lackluster. Does a little bit of damage, not a huge pile of damage. It hit it on the nose there. Yeah, pretty pathetic really. But like I say, if you have it on absurdly high damage values, it makes a neat little sort of five uh, meter radius sphere in the target. It's pretty cool. But generally speaking, really not that good. Now, EMP is, as I've already said, a bit of a favorite, favorite of mine. The, um, the EMP cannons from, or the EMP version of these particle cannons is absolutely savage. It's a better amp delivery method than I think even cram cannons, and they're one of the best. Uh, does a great job of cutting out loads of the shields because you can see here there's no shields left on the front of the ship here frequently ai deads things is highly highly effective 
A thing I've noticed about EMPs though is they benefit actually from a single pipe cannon. Now these, this one has five pipes and you can see the different stats for the different pipes here. And you can have up to five, you can have one if you want, you can have three, two, four, whatever. Um, but the difference is um, you can benefit from them in different ways. Something like EMP benefits from a single high energy strike which does loads of damage across the whole ship. Um, something like piercing benefits from lots of smaller ones because it has a high piercing value. If you have reasonable damage per shot, you're going to get five trails of damage. And that's the equivalent of like something like five railgun shells going through a target at once, which is really interesting. It can actually cause them to do significant damage, even to things like, you know, bulwarks and stuff like that, and make a nice big tracking hole right into the middle of them. Um, impact is the thumper damage. It's pretty cool. It, um, generally speaking, isn't as effective as piercing is. But at higher damage values, it can do an awful lot of damage. It strips the outside armor off hulls and would work really well in you know, some other scenarios where you're using weapons alongside each other. So yeah, the, the thumper damage is really cool, but a little less effective than piercing in most cases. I think with the thumper damage, it benefits more from being on, um, on an AI that doesn't have aim point selection actually, which is interesting. Yeah, that's the uh, different damage types and what they do. Now, this one, like I say, is a more practical version. Uh, you'd need something like a red line just to keep this thing moving at all times. It needs a moderately sized battery bank. And these things are quite expensive to build as well. And they're easy to destroy. They're not explodey at least, but they are quite easy to destroy because any damage to any of the tubes and that tube is unable to fire and can potentially cause all sorts of wacky stuff because if I, for example, was to take this and turn it around that way, just to see what happens when it fires. See? It fires off randomly. So, yeah, you have to be careful of damage on these things, because they can they can actually do a lot of damage to your ships if it continues to fire, and your beam is undirected, because if it's pointing that way, for example, and you have stuff on your ship... Come on. Oh, look. Yeah wrecked a whole bunch of my ship there. So, it is kind of cool how they can get destroyed and uh, wreck different parts of your ship. But obviously we have to move on to these idiotic things on the end because they are the start of the show. This guy has uh, five single, uh, or five pipes, 34 in each of the outside ones and 63 in the inside. And it is overclocked to the max. It's on a one axis turret, I believe, but it is just stupid and it's one of the reasons for well it is probably the prime reason for all of these stupid amount of engines at the back here just a few you know these are all fuel injection like 10 red lines here and a significant battery bank but let's uh, let's cut here and uh, change over to something a little bit more interesting okay so this is a multi-pipe variety of a sort of particle derp cannon i guess <laughs> It does about 200,000 damage every 10 seconds. I've got it set to impact right now, and that seems to work pretty effectively. Let us get something maybe a little bit bigger than this basher here to test it out against. Let's get a bulwark. Good old bulwarks. Always a great test. They've actually got a bit of an update, and they're pretty scary now because they now have a complete blanket of shields over their whole... Uh, their whole body, and that makes them pretty hard to kill now. See, shields, shields everywhere. Not an issue for our new particle cannons, because they just ignore them completely. And we're already making a bit of a dent in the hull here. Oh, there we go. Now this is set to impact. Impact is like thump damage, and having a little bit of spread on them, just at the edge of your range, is really good, because it sort of spreads the damage out into a bigger area. And that is just devastating. Massive swathes of the hull being destroyed there. Now, if we were to set this to uh, piercing, it should do a hole pretty much straight through the hull. Let's try that. Piercing. Let's pause it here and see what this shot has done. Oh, that's pretty good. Look at that damage. 
That was from one shell, a one shot. And the thing about the, the way that the particle cannons work, the, the beam sort of spreads a little bit, and that makes these like um, piercing rounds so effective in comparison to like a real gun. It does go straight through in one area and does you know one little direct line of damage all the way down. This spreads out a little bit and does a whopping pile of damage in the area that it's trying to destroy, and it, they're really effective. Now these are obviously absolute dirt versions of the thing. Um, their DPS is even still not that great, but their initial burst damage is absolutely savage, and the sort of uh, disabling ability that they can have on other vessels is really, really powerful. That's a hole straight through to the other side of a bulwark. There's another hole straight through. <laughs> Does an awful mess, awful, awful mess. So very effective, but um, yeah, they're they're a lot of fun to play with. Uh, let's try EMP. I think should work okay. Now, typically EMPs benefit more from a much, much larger, you know, like a single, um, a single pipe system, where you can get one massive burst of damage in one place, but. This seems to work pretty well for disabling shields. Now, unfortunately, bulwarks are a massive target, and they're, they're quite a bad example for EMPs because they're almost impervious to them due to their size. It's just not enough to do enough significant damage. So, EMP seems to be the daddy of anti-air, but it just doesn't seem to work all that well with really, really high damage values. But let's have a go at the other guy on the end here. Because that is one pipe, isn't it? One? One enormous pipe, it is, yeah. So, let's turn this guy off. Uh, we're going to need a new bulwark. And have a look at the settings for this guy. Uh, damage and accuracy is set pretty high. Uh, I have been mucking around with these, playing with different settings. So let's pop this back up to the top. I actually find with impact... Um, now, this was set to 6, and there was a reason for that, because... I find that a 6 second charge time seemed to do more damage in terms of how many beams and stuff were destroyed in comparison to the 10. There seems to be a bit of a damage fall off with this, so if you can get it to, you know, I mean this does like 200k damage. Oh, this is set still pretty low. I turned these down because it was firing both of them at the same time. <laughs> is it 420k power we have? There we go, that'll do. 4.25. 5. And, uh, yeah. 346k damage, and at the 6 second charge time, it seemed to do comparably more damage than the 10 second charge time, which was quite interesting. So as I say, there seems to be some sort of damage fall off on the um, the thumper equation or calculation or whatever. But let's see it happening here, come on. Helps to turn the AI on. Oh, there we go. And this is one shot. Um... Where the hell did it even damage? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Could be said. And that's the uh, the thumper damage sort of spreading. There's another one. Good lord. Just absolutely savage. And because this is like a six second, I mean, the damage, it's happening so consistently. I think this could probably kill it. Um, in fairly short order. Oh, that didn't seem to do anything. Interesting. Oh, look at that damage. It's just the spread. I mean, they're all beams, damn it. They're all beams. <laughs> now, this this thing, it, it can shoot through just about anything end to end um, with the piercing setting, but it only has one pipe. And that's an important thing to note about these uh, cannons as well, is the uh, pipes sort of function independently. And you can have different lengths of pipes all in the same cannon, and they will all fire at the same time, but they'll all have slightly different damage values and costs and all that sort of a thing. So it's, uh, it's something to note. And it actually pays off really well for the piercing value. As I was saying before, the way that they spread out into multiple sections and destroy five different lines on your target it is just so very effective. But these cannons are a lot of fun to play with. They are really, really cool. They have... They're, they're very, very fiddly to build. 
I won't lie. Um, it took me a while to get my head around the best ways to go about it. It seems that just spamming them and exploiting prefabs is a great way to do it. And yeah, they're, uh, they are pretty satisfying once you get past those initial tweak values and stuff like that. Because, like I said at the start, they were pretty unsatisfying to use at the very beginning until I got my head around how they worked. But I do encourage you to have a go with them, play about and see what you can come up with. Because in terms of anti-air, they're absolutely ridiculous. They don't really do anything else that's terribly unique. I mean, lasers do direct damage like this. We have cannons that do all the same sort of effects, but they don't do it in quite this way. And they allow you to have a big backline and a small turret, much like the laser systems. So as Mr. Elshigan pointed out to me, who's one of my Twitch moderators, said the PAC, or the Particle Accelerator Cannons, the PACs, are kind of like what the cram cannons are to the advanced cannons. They're a simple sort of brute force method of doing the same, roughly the same things, but they're still pretty damn good at doing it. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'll make the blueprint of this available in the video description for you, and you can download it from my Google Drive account and play with it yourself if you wanna have a look at these particle accelerators. But I do hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.